you already know it's Monday. It's that time of the week again where I get to tweet on my Fabre Nation Twitter account. Oh yeah, tweet on a Twitter. Imagine that. About Monday Night Raw. I would occasionally do it for SmackDown, but my television sometimes doesn't like the sci-fi channel around Fridays. Who'd have thunk it, but... I don't know, I guess... It really doesn't want me to see SmackDown, and I can't blame it. SmackDown is a terrible show. At times. And at other times, it can do a good job of making itself relevant again. It's like MySpace. <laughs> What the fuck? Anyway, scratching my legs here. Orton beat Cena. He actually kicked Cena's fucking ass in a way, because I heard there was a chair spot where. I don't know, he got slammed or power bombed on a table, but it wasn't his whole body. There was a botch where it was just his head or his neck, which actually makes it look more painful. And of course, Cena was handcuffed to the ropes like usual. I mean, Orton's done this three times. And Cena did get out, but not in time. Orton eventually did get the both of the titles. What I was expecting, because house shows often make spoilers to events, was that they were going to switch titles, but really house shows can sometimes trick you like that, where you think that the future is going to be played out a certain way, but it's not. First thought in my head is that, first thought really, I really don't like when they feud. I really didn't like the way this thing played out. It was three weeks of them playing Grand the Orton out as a fucking spoiled brat. And Cena acting like he's Randy Orton's dad or fodder figure because they've been in the business together and he still has a lot to learn and as a heel, he has to be this chicken shit that wants everything his way. We're not talking about the Viper now. We're not talking about Orton when he was part of Legacy, the leader actually, and he was a sociopathic heel. He was calculating, he was in a way fearless, and he was cold. As a face, he was like this. Up until he turned heel, then they just turned gave him the generic heel gimmick. So you mean to tell me that the WWE is really going to make all their heels the same? There's no variety. I mean, the closest we have to a brave, fearless heel is Brock Lesnar. And he's only there for... WrestleMania, Extreme Rules Season, and SummerSlam. So, two of the big four pay-per-views. The biggest ones that there are, actually. Unless you count the Royal Rumble, which is more of a gimmick pay-per-view than anything else. But damn. WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I wanted Unified Championship as a name because it's not really the Undisputed Championship. Like, Undisputed World Champion, Undisputed WWE Champion. It's none of that because I'm referring to the poll that WWE made a few weeks ago. The wrestling doesn't have that same landscape where there's only one world title in the states that really counts. TNA is having its problems, but it definitely has a world title. They 
had the fences in New Japan Pro Wrestling. They have that Ring of Honor has been going international with its title. That's how it's tried proving it. It didn't do a shortcut with the fucking NWA title as a warm up, but again. That's an ugly ass name. WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Or your WWE World Heavyweight Champion. It's long. It's kind of clunky. If you replace the E with an F, for some reason it does kind of work. WWF World Heavyweight Championship. But. You're just adding so much filth to a title. Just call it the Unified Championship. And then after six months or two months, go back to calling it the WWE Championship. Or your champion. It makes more sense. Sounds better. And really keeps the tradition. Names fucking matter. Names fucking matter. They really do. Because when something is unnamed, we can't really rationalize it or describe it very well. I noticed that stupid people like to do this thing. Not stupid, I'm going to be fair. Intellectually unsophisticated people like to describe emotions without actually saying the word for them, or the term for them, even when it's present and it makes things play out more interestingly. Like what I said with the Dunning-Kruger effect, people sometimes say, like a proverb, in a proverbial fashion, those that think of themselves as skillful are usually the least skillful. Or in another fashion, you could say that uh, we like to describe emotion, social awkwardness, in a ranty, that's crazy kind of way, but we don't actually use word. We don't use terms like schadenfreude that don't exist in the English language. We don't even use words that are simple, first grade, second grade level, that do exist in our English language. I don't know why, but when he's with her, I'm just like, it feels so bad for me. Like, that's envy. That's fucking envy. So there's not using a word, and then there's using a shitty word to describe something. Which you can use with terms like racist or sexist, terms that are kind of infidel and more buzzwords than anything else, and solely exist as a buzzword. I mean, Fringe Elements is more of a race realist than me because he actually understands things like legal frequencies and those technical autistic jargon terms. They're jargon for me, but I'm more of a racialist than he is. And French talks about this a lot, but then when we think about this, we're going into more new directions. And we're talking about wrestling right now. So in terms of wrestling, if you use a shitty title name, that's an even bigger mess because laymen watch wrestling. Laymen and autistic freaks like me and Spoony One and a lot of members of No DQ Wrestling for. Those are the people that make up the fan base. And you know you have a shitty title name, how are you gonna talk about that shit? I know some people have ugly ass names and I don't even want to say their fucking name. Like one of my teachers was named like some French ugly ass, like crappy regional name. And I I just wanted to I pronounced her name differently, I used shortcuts, I said the bitch with the ugly name, because I don't want to say her fucking name. Her name just brought so much dread to me. That's how I feel about this world title. 
I just want to call it WWE's world title at this point because or the main event title because WWE World Heavyweight Championship that's an ugly fucking term and because the McMahons showed up afterwards to congratulate Orton we're probably going to have a ceremony tonight on Monday Night Raw, and I'm very much curious on how things are going to play out, because we're treading Road to WrestleMania territory. It begins at the Royal Rumble, but at the start of a new year, I'm not going to consider the first few weeks of January not the Road to WrestleMania. They're practically there. Speculation aside, we're practically fucking there. As soon as the year begins, all that should be the topic is fucking Mania and maybe the Royal Rumble. I know that kind of has its own, like, focus that takes over WrestleMania because, well, let's be honest, the Royal Rumble is fucking cool. It's one of the few gimmick pay-per-views that stick, stuck with us and became a big four. The classic five, like King of the Ring, a badass tournament to decide who is, like, has the bragging rights for the rest of the year. That didn't stick. Survivor Series? They wanted to get rid of Survivor Series every now and then. It's the weakest of the big four. It's the weakest link. And not all Survivor Series have that tag team aspect. Some of them have a bit of a tournament aspect. And some have the Elimination Chamber, and a one did. So, now that we're treading that territory, I'm very curious as how the World's WrestleMania is going to play out, because we may be seeing Orton traversing there. And we haven't seen Orton in a title match since 09 for... The World Wrestling Federation at Maine has a title around there. 2010, he was fighting the other members of Legacy in a handicap match. Or a triple threat. I don't really know. It played out more as a handicap match up until they started turning on each other trying to get the pin on Orton. So really, it was sort of a fuck up. Maybe it should have been a handicap match. Because I was retarded. Uh, 2011, he fought CM Punk in a revenge match for something that happened two or three years ago. And Punk lost, even though a few months later he was going to go into one of his biggest career moments. That was stupid. Or just won a couple of titles from Christian. He should have turned heel then. But they didn't really do anything for him for the rest of the year after that, and 2012 they did nothing with him. They had him do another revenge match with Kane. This time he jobs out to Kane for no fucking reason, only to win again at Extreme Rules. So what the fuck was up with that? Then he has a triple threat revenge match with the Shield, and that really doesn't make sense. So he's just been in non-stop revenge matches at Mania that have done nothing to help him, and they've only hurt him more. They got rid of his interesting stable, which got rid of most of the interesting storylines. Uh, they kind of made Punk look like a dickhead, and him look like a dickhead for the rest of the year. Ruined any chance of him being a face in 2011. 2012, they just gave him no direction for a whole fucking year because of that Kane shit. And 13, what the fuck? Big Show, Kane, Sheamus, Ryback, where the fuck are all of them now? Just like, they're all all over the place. Anyway, this is Mr. Wonka 7, and. See you fucking. See you tonight. I won't be tweeting, hopefully.